I would like to start our conversation by, first of all, focusing on the larger landscape of our nation. And uh, from your vantage points and uh, where you are at different cities, uh, how, do you, how do you assess uh, the race relations in our United States right now? Uh, what are some things that troubles you particularly? What are the, some things that gives you a sense of hope? Mm -hmm. So anyone can jump in and, and share. I'll start and just kind of, I think you see some of these things nationally and some, of course, are more applicable locally. But, you know, on positive trends, when we look at people's stated prejudice, it's declined substantially over mm. time. Mm. Uh, we see more intermarriage. Diversity, obviously, is growing across our nation's cities. Mm -hmm. um, we have an African-American president, at least for a little bit more. <laughs> um, then we see a lot of places that have kind of stagnated segregation in our neighborhoods are just kind of sitting there. We uh, are seeing that there isn't much movement in terms of graduation rates, closing those gaps. Mm -hmm. And then some things are getting worse. Income inequality is about the same, but wealth inequality, which is really what gives us access to resources, is growing substantially. Mm -hmm. uh, we're seeing, uh, in terms of school segregation, that declined until about 1990 and has been increasing every year since. Uh more segregated again with our uh, kids growing up. Uh, so some of those are troubling issues. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, for me, I, I think it's, it seems like it's a paradox. Uh, on one hand, as, as Michael said, the, the attitudes are, are getting better. Mm -hmm. uh, people are getting along across racial lines probably like never before. Uh, but on the other hand, there's a, there's a tremendous polarization when it comes to what we value, what we, mm. our attitudes mm. and our beliefs mm. about mm. what's important. Mm. And so I, I see that there's a, a growing gap between people truly having authentic relationships, but like, like I said, paradoxically, there's the superficial relationships that are going on. Mm. So, uh, you know, it's kind of like, well, it is sort of post, I told, I've, I've heard our, our situation described as a post-civil rights mm -hmm. era. It's like, what do you do when racism, quote unquote, isn't like in your face, mm -hmm. but it's just gone underground? So on the surface, everything seems like it's okay. Mm -hmm. But then on the other hand, there's these, these uh, great, great problems that are happening because of race. Mm -hmm. And it's sort of in this age of toleration, uh, how do we get at that? How do we get beneath the iceberg, so to speak? Sure. Mm -hmm. yeah. And Alvin, you're from city of Cincinnati that has yes. gone through very tumultuous race relations uh, yes. about a yeah. decade ago. Well, how yeah. are things over there then? Um, like, like pretty much what I, like what I'm talking about. <laughs> um, you know, this, this city has in a lot of ways healed from a lot of the, the racial turmoil that happened. But on the other hand, it's still very prevalent and it's still there. It's just hidden. It's codified racism, so to speak. Ah. Okay. So. Mm -hmm. The church and the church that I pastor, you know, a large percentage of our folks um, are the millennials. Mm -hmm. And so you're talking about a group of folks who are accustomed to growing up in a multicultural, mm -hmm. multiracial society. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. on one level, uh, in light of what you're saying, I think there's a level of comfort, you know, sort of like this is what I'm accustomed to. Mm -hmm. My friends, my coworkers, where I go hang out mm -hmm. at. Yeah. I'm very comfortable. Mm -hmm. But you're absolutely right. I think that causes in some way sort of a, lef a level of uh, superficial, yep. you know, there's lack of depth in, in conversations. And uh, the city that I live in, so the way this comes, kind of comes to halt is um, I have uh, two kids in, in uh, elementary school. I have a second grader, and uh, Sophie's going to be, uh, she's in kindergarten. And so we were affected by the Chicago school uh, teacher oh, yeah. strike. Mm -hmm. And so that kind of forced us purely because our kids are in school to, to, to really pay attention to what's going on in the educational system. Mm. And once you really get into the educational system in a large city like Chicago, for example, when they talk about the fact that in order to uh, in sort of uh, close the budget gap, some 100 to 140 schools mm. will need to be closed mm. wow. next year. Mm. And when you look at where all or majority of these schools are, mm -hmm. they're in underserved, under-resourced communities, yep. mm -hmm. you know? And mm -hmm. so for anybody that's paying attention, even in a city like Chicago, mm -hmm. um, there is a massive gap mm -hmm. 
socioeconomically that's mm. tied to racial and ethnic neighborhoods mm. and people groups. Yep. So it's there, it's real, and it's becoming, in my opinion, worse. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It seems like the consensus here, at least, is that uh, the racial climate and a growing gap among racial groups is continually increasing. Um, and that's the context in which today's churches are called to serve and uh, be witnessing communities.